Rambo's song that talked about he picked out a valley for me. Amen. Sometimes we need to get in that valley so we can appreciate how good it is on the mountaintop. Praise the Lord. If you're in the valley tonight, I want to tell you, you're not going to stay there forever, friend. God is going to bring you up out of there. It is time to trust Him. Amen. Amen. Trust the Lord while you're there. And I believe, personally, that the darker that valley, the harder that time is in the valley, the sweeter and the better the victory is that comes in the morning. Thank God for that. Friend, He's faithful. Amen. Could you say amen to that? God is faithful. Amen. There is nothing you need that God can't and won't provide you. He has promised us that. We're thankful tonight. We're going to bring our guest speaker, Brother Horton, to the pulpit at this time. I appreciate this, Brother. I already said that before, but I want you to know again, he and his wife and family are a blessing to me and to the Church of God. We're going to pray for him. I'm going to ask all of the pastors if you would stand. And I want you to lead this prayer. Ask that God will give him a special anointing and give him the very words we need to hear. And friends, when this message is over and the altar call is given, if you don't have any problems, then stay right where you sit. But if you have anything at all that's plaguing or troubling your life, this altar is going to be open to you. There's no time like the present to get right here and minister before the service tonight. I ask you to take the lead. Let's take the lead. Let's get in that altar. Let's pray through the problems we have. And ask God for Himself. Pastors, lead us in prayer. Appreciate 
uh, Brother and Sister East step tonight. I appreciate their work and their ministry. I know the Lord is using them here. We're praying for them, praying for you. Uh, trust you're praying for us. We're all in this together, aren't we? Come on. We're all in this together. We might be living in uh, a few different places, but we're all brothers one of another, sisters one of another, working for the glory of God. It's good to be here with our general overseer and his wife, Brother and Sister Smith. Uh, glad to be with them here tonight. Uh, I'm among friends tonight. I've known some of you uh, for years. Uh, I've gone to, went to Thomason College with at least two uh, that are here uh, in the building tonight. We've known the Hamiltons. Well, they've known Kathy since she was just a little old tiny little girl. And uh, I got acquainted with them several years ago. We've been close and we, uh, so we're among friends and we just want to rejoice with you tonight. Amen. Come on. Some of you we've got to know a little bit in couples retreat and at assemblies and in different events and some you know, I seen someone the other day I, uh, in um, Arkansas. I'd never met them in person, but I knew exactly who they was because I'd seen them uh, on the Internet, uh, you know, somewhere on a church page or something. And, you know, we've got media now that we, we know one another. Come on, we're, we're here in, in uh, Indiana tonight, uh, but you might go home and, and uh, here to your hotel somewhere, get on your computer, and you might read a testimony of somewhere in Africa or somewhere around the world. Now listen, I, I know a lot of this stuff's dangerous, but a lot of it brings a lot of glory to God Amen. and His church. And I tell you, I believe God is on the move. How about you? I believe God's getting ready to do something that we've been praying about. I believe God's getting ready to get a hold of the reins. Come on now, if we'll let go, God will get a hold of this thing. He's getting ready to do something glorious in His church. And I want to be a part of that. How about you? I want to be a part of what I'm feeling in my soul and in my spirit. Now listen, we can do one of two things in life. We can look at the negative. There's always going to be problems, folks. Listen, just because the church reaches perfection won't mean that there's not going to be problems in this world. Come on, there's always going to be something or someone that's going to try to discourage you or bring you down. We can look at the positive. We can look at the promises of God. We can look at His Word and know what He's promised and trust and believe God for His grace and His glory. I want to choose to believe Him and, and, and stay on that side that's expecting the great things of God. My thought tonight is this, that there's more beyond our theme for our regional convention this year was going beyond. Remember, history teaches us that they believe that the world was flat. They believe that if you sailed so far, you'd just drop off, you know. I guess sort of a Niagara Falls experience. That the world was flat and you could only go so far and you could, uh, you know, only uh, find so much. So the motto then was, no more beyond. Is there anything I can do making, I feel like I'm making a lot of racket. Are we all right? Okay. Well, I know I'm making a lot. I'm known to make a little bit of racket. I, I break all of the rules that they tried to teach me in hermeneutics and homiletics, well, at least homiletics. They told me I'm supposed to stand here and be still and not wave your arms and, and distract from the word. I, I can't hardly do that. Y'all just you have to forgive me. I'm not too uh, uh, homiletically sound, but uh, I'm going to try to just let the Holy Ghost have His way. I learned a long time ago, and I'm, I'm just, I'll be perfectly honest with you, I don't have a thing to give to you tonight. I might can stir you emotionally. I can tell a good story or two. I might make you laugh, and it's possible I could even make you cry just on my own. But it won't get us anywhere. It won't do anything for us. But what I need is the teacher to show up. I need the, I need the Holy Ghost. Are you praying for me? Hallelujah. There's nothing I can do. I know that I don't have anything to give. But I have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And I, if I'll allow Him that you'll help me, we'll find something in the Word of God here tonight. So, there's no more beyond. So they fought and so they believed until Christopher Columbus ventured out beyond where man would go before. Later, when he died in 1506, 
makes a statue of a lion uh, pays homage to the explorer. There in this uh, statue, there's a, a lion with his claws reached out and he's tang tearing away a part of that old motto. And he's tearing away the no. There's claw marks, uh, claw marks to the no until it changes the motto from no more beyond to more beyond. Oh, it was passion that drove Christopher Columbus to go further than any man had gone before. It was passion that caused him to want to see what no one else had ever seen before. I believe it was passion of all in the church that caused men and women to pray and find God as none had ever found before that brought us to some of the places that we're enjoying today. What it took then is going to take today and then some, I believe. Oh, yeah. Come on. Yeah. Amen. Amen. If it took a lot of prayer then, it's going to take a lot more prayer today. Amen. 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 We need to understand that there is more. There's more that God wants to show us. There's more that God wants to do for us. The word passion applies to intense emotion, compelling action that is deeply stirring. One sentence to kind of describe it says, he was a slave to his passion. Come on, passion will drive us and cause us to go places and do things that maybe we wouldn't do normally. We go over here, Brother Eastep said he's heard that a lot of are dealing with discouragement. Was that what you said? Discouragement or depression? I'm here to tell you folks, we need to Come on, we need the Lord of God to fall on the church. We need to get beyond that. Come on, you can't settle down. Are we going to get discouraged every once in a while? Sure we are. It doesn't matter who you are, how upbeat, how peppy you are. Somewhere you're going to run into something. But the key is don't make a bed there. Come on, don't set up camp there. Make up your mind. You're not going to stay there. But you're going to go beyond that place. Give to his glory. I'll never forget some things you shouldn't have to remember, but I, you know, I can't forget this. It was just shortly after we had come back in and renewed covenant and we was at a, a minister's convention and I'd been asked to preach. And there I preached and just, it's, you know, really just <laughs> had a good time. Just felt the anointing and, and just really had a good time. And it was after I got done preaching, it was just in another room. They had a little kitchen area and had some sandwiches and things. And everybody was going that way. And as I uh, was making my way uh, through there, about three ladies was standing uh, talking. And, and the line kind of got stopped there. And, and, the, and one of them looked up to me and said, uh, uh, you know, we used to have passion like that. We used to be excited like that. Now that's exactly what was told to us. We used to be excited like that. We used to. The only thing I could get out of that was stick around. You'll lose yours too. <laughs> Come on, I'm determined not to lose my joy. Amen. And when my joy gets weak, I'm going to the well of salvation. And I'm going to give up some more. Hallelujah. We're going to have to make it have a made up mind. We're not going to get stuck in the spiritual mud somewhere. We're not going to let the church get stuck in the mud. But we're going to get on our prayer boat. And we're going to seek the Lord till he rain righteousness down on us. Do you feel that way tonight? Amen. Amen. Brother Roger said it like this. We need passion in our faith. Listen to this. Try to comprehend this statement. Instead of praying, if I should die before I wake, we should pray, wake me up before I die. Come on. If we're not careful, a sleep will come on us. Come on, a, a spiritual sleep will fall on us. Hey Amen. The devil's, come on, he just like who was that sleeping beauty? You know, that, that, I guess she was a witch that, you know, fixed that apple up and put a potion on it so that when she bit that apple, she went into a sleep. I'm here to tell you the devil's working just as hard as he.